ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له فاشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون صلى الله عليه وسلم indeed the praises for allah and therefore we praise him exclusively we seek his help his aid exclusively and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge with allah from the evil that emanates from within ourselves and the harm thereof whomsoever allah guides there is none to misguide and whomsoever allah allows to be misguided there is none to guide we give over testimony that there is no deity worthy of worship but allah highly glorified is he he has no part in the dominion of his creation we give further testimony that muhammad to the quran was revealed as his servant and messenger peace and prayers be upon him upon his family upon his companions and all those who gather in righteousness and will follow the after amen o you will believe have taqwa for allah as it is his right to be the recipient of taqwa and i not accept as muslims i not accept in a state of willing and active submission surely allah speaks the truth assalamu alaykum beloved muslims we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us another day of gathering another day of juma another day to recommit ourselves another day for us to show up for ourselves not just for each other but for us to show up for ourselves so we thank allah for giving us the inclination towards obedience we thank allah for giving us ears that hear hearts that feel eyes that see and not the opposite for those who have ears but they don't hear they have eyes but they don't see and they have hearts that don't feel so we thank allah for sensitizing us and before we begin the football we want to also thank dua for our, our fellow uh, americans um who are uh dealing with the devastation of hurricane Irene right now uh which was most uh uh most directly felt in North Carolina although it hit you know Florida and Alabama and, and Tennessee and uh Georgia um but there there are places that used to be um right people that used to have homes you know a, a week ago and then, and they're no longer there communities that have been you know they have been devastated and it's going to take a while for them to recoup inshallah uh just the material aspect but we make dua, you know, may Allah make this uh, easy for them, as easy as possible, and give them, uh, give them the suburb, the uh, the consistent, uh, the consistent drive to move forward and get past this, inshallah. I mean, so I felt that it was appropriate at this time for us to, uh, for what we find ourselves as a society, as a, as a nation, um, to examine examine a, a theme that I believe has great importance for us. And it's important for us to understand that the word, the Quran that Allah gives us, it is not, this is not something that is, it is, is a, it is not a theoretical thing. It is not something that is separated from, from real life. This is real life. And if it is understood properly, and if it is uh, applied properly, it begins to give us the type of a life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually uh, wants us to have, right? If we understand this. So I want to speak uh, today about this concept, the concept of longevity, inviting longevity, inviting longevity. And this within the concept or the framework of uh, the Khalifa, the role of Khalifa. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels, he says, I am going to create a vice gerund. I'm going to create a Khalifa in the earth, right? And that statement was met with what? It was met with with a bit of a surprise and, and a bit of doubt, right? There was some trepidation that came along with that. And it was, well, you know, you're about to give it to this dude. You're going to make a man and you're going to give a man this kind of authority? What can the outcome be but, but bloodshed? But mischief, what can the outcome be but this? This is what we know of, of a human being. And you're going to elevate one. And of course, Allah, the lost one, I know what you don't know. Right? So Allah teaches Adam. He, he educates him. He sensitizes Adam. 
And he puts him in a position of successive leadership, the Khalifa, right? It's not it's not a title that goes to uh, one individual. It does not rest with or end with one individual. It implies successive authority, generation after generation after generation. It's a su successive authority. Now, I want to speak about this from the uh, from the lens of, and forgive me for not reading the actual uh, the, uh, the, the 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 chronic the, the Arabic. Um, I've been having some issues um, just today. I think it's time for a new prescription. Uh, that's all. So I'm going to give you the uh, the rendering. Um, this is a uh, sort of the Bakara, thirty fifth and thirty sixth ayah. Uh, this is the uh, rendering by uh, Yusuf Ali. I'll be pleased with his effort. Um, we said, O Adam, dwell thou and thy wife in the garden and eat of the bountiful things therein as where and when you will, but approach not this tree, or you run into harm and transgression. Then did Satan make them slip from the garden and get them out of the state of felicity in which they had been. We said, get ye down, all ye people with enmity between yourselves. On earth will be your dwelling place and your means of livelihood for a time shall be lost in truth. So I want to draw your attention, our attention to this part that Allah has given Adam Salam everything that he could need. He has given him his purpose. He has given him provision and he has properly sensitized him, right? So he didn't just give him a purpose, but he gave him the education that was necessary for him to fulfill the purpose. You don't give somebody uh, the title of leader and they don't have the, the proper education. They don't, they don't know the lay of the land, right? So Allah has given Adam everything that, that he needs. He's wanting for nothing. But somehow, Shaitan comes along and makes him slip, right? And he makes him slip. How? He makes him slip. He says, well, so first he says, uh, after they have uh, revealed to them their, their private parts, right? Their, their innermost, that, that part that they want to keep separated from public view. He said, the only reason that your Lord has forbidden this tree uh, from you is that uh, it would it would it would result, your consuming it would result in you having eternal life. Eternal life. So before we kind of break this down again, again, let's go back to he has everything he needs. He's been given his purpose, right? He's been educated. Why would eternal life, why would this be something that is so alluring and so attractive? And what is the, what is the lesson that we can take from this? As I said, the Quran, Allah's word is not something that is theoretical. It's not story time. It has relevance for where we are right now today and where we will be 10, 15, 100 years from now. All right? As I say, he was given the role of Khalifa. Right? He has authority. What do we see today? We see people who have authority, who have power, and they will do anything that they can to keep that power. They may have started out, it's like you got a, a good politician, right? There's oxymoron, it sounds right. <laughs> they start out. They are, they are, they are just, they are so excited. They're, they're innocent. They're naive. And the more, the longer they stay in those circles of, of power, the, the more they are elevated, the more disconnected they tend to become from what their true purpose was. And their struggle becomes maintaining power, just staying in office. Right. So they become disconnected. And it's, you know, it's not all of them, but it's the ones that is not. They usually wind up getting booted. So Adam -Salam, was also faced with faced with a, a similar situation. Where he has he has authority. He's been given he's been given an authority that nobody else has. And Shaitan comes to him in a way that says, well, you don't have you don't have to have to worry about giving up that authority. Because if you take on, if you eat from this tree, 
you will you will have eternal life and you will always be an authority. You will always have power. It's not about the succession. It's not about preparing the next generation. See, there's a, there is within this idea of the Khalifa, there is the assumption and the expectation that we understand the continuity of generations. That we have already accepted the, uh, the fact that our lives are limited. We have a limited, ask, a limited uh, amount of time to be here. And this means that we have to prepare those who come behind us. But more importantly, that is not enough to say that's not enough on its own, right? Because the Muslim is one who what? The Muslim is one who stands firmly for justice. Stands firmly for justice. Yeah, Oh, you believe? Stand firmly, stand as witnesses, you know, to Allah, for justice, for equity, for what is what is proper. That is an extension of the, the role of Khalifa. That comes with it. You can't, you can't have the role of Khalifa without standing for justice. You can't have that. You can't separate that. And you can't have authority that is successive. You might, you might think that because. My party or my, my people have been in power for the past 50 or 75 or 100 years that somehow that, that means that we have fulfilled the role of Khalifa. But if you have separated that from justice, then no, you have not. You have not. So when we think about this idea of inviting longevity, it's important we understand that the longevity that we're talking about is not the longevity of just our own physical life. But it's the longevity of the life that, that extends beyond us. It's the life that, 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 that we help to cultivate. Right? Because what is the one of the, the worst things that we have? I shouldn't say one of the worst, right? There's a whole lot of terrible things. But as it relates to community, one of the worst things that we can have is where you have someone who has authority, right? And not just community in a religious sense, but community in a governmental sense and whatever the area may be. Right? But you don't have you don't have continuity. You have one person. You have one person who's doing all the lifting, all all of all of the work. And they like it like that. They want to be that one person. They want to make all the decisions. They want to have all the authority. They want to have all the answers. And if you try to come in, try to get close, say, back up, back up. This, this is my thing right here. This is my thing. Don't, don't come over here. So when we think about our role, our role, the, the inheritance that we have as, as, the, uh, as the inheritance of, of the Khalifa, right, as the embodiment of that, we have to understand that we have to look out for uh, Sheikh Tom's very simple scheme that he will try to lull us to sleep. You get some power, you get some authority, and all of a sudden now your life just just becomes about the authority, just becomes about the power. So that's that's a fight for us. That's a fight for us, and that's something that we have to be we have to be uh, cognizant of. I'm looking uh, right now, and I'm thinking about the. Uh, Prophet Suleiman, and we know that he had he had riches and uh, and resources beyond anybody else's wild and strength. Right, communicate animal control, the wind, control the jinn. Right, and they hated him for that. <laughs> right, he had material wealth on a scale that that nobody nobody saw, and he was tested. And he was tested. But what did he say after, after passing the test? After passing the test, he, he asks Allah, he says, well, he asks, he asks Allah, he says, give me a, a kingdom, give me, give me a uh, uh, paraphrase, give me a kingdom such that nobody else, it would not suit anybody else to come after. And if you examine that, if you really think about that, what he's saying is, I also understand people. I understand human nature, and I understand that I was blessed to overcome the, the, the challenge. 
right? Overcome the test of having power, of having authority, of having all of this around. He said he, he pet, pets his uh, his steeds, right? Yeah, he's looking at his at the horse, this beautiful, you know, when these when these rare breeds of horses, and he tells them, hey, bring it back you know, at night, bring it back here. I want to look at it again, right? And he's thinking about all that he has, and he realizes that he's being tested in that. But how many leaders? How many how many leaders fail that own that that test of self awareness, that test of self assessment? It says, "Give me all of this because I know how to handle it. I know how to handle it, but I don't trust the rest of these. But that's that's for a lot to decide, right? I don't trust the rest of these people. I don't have any confidence that whoever's coming after me." could also handle what I have and not become a tyrant. And then we're given the example of Pharaoh, right? Of Pharaoh. All the material resources, and he is a tyrant. And his idea of longevity is simply to pass on, pass on a system of oppression. Pass on a system of oppression, a system of division. So our, the way we invite longevity it begins with us understanding that we all have a shared responsibility. We all have a we all have a an authority that has been invested in each of us. The Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, "Each of you is a shepherd. And you're responsible for your flocks. Each of you, each of us, right on varying levels, and it means that we we will be judged. We will be judged on how we discharge our duty to those to those that we have authority over." We will be judged on that. So the leader who believes that it is it is enough for them to simply have power, but yet they have power because they have kept the people divided. They have power because they have subjugated a small group and elevated another. They, are, they have power because they encourage mischief. And it's important for us to understand when the, the word mischief, when it's used in a crime, we're not talking about blowing spitballs at people. Right? This is not lightweight stuff. It's not turning the lights off when somebody's in the room and running out. No. Mischief is something that gets you, uh, that makes you eligible for, for capital punishment. Right? Mischief is is is, is corrupting of corrupting the land. Mischief is uh pitting people against one another. Mischief is the is the hyper exploitation that we see going on all around the world. Right, mischief is, is is slave labor. Mischief is is uh is, is denying the truth. So it's not lightweight. It's not lightweight stuff. This is this is serious stuff that Allah is speaking to us about in the ground. and these are and it relates to the serious things that are going on right now. So for us, we have to we have to take stock, and there is the. The longevity that we uh, that we invite as communities and as communities, we we build that up by having connectivity, by being connected to one another, one another, by all having a share and a uh, a recognition of our of our, our shared goal. What is our shared mission? We're understanding that we all have a part to play in that. So it comes with being responsible, right? So we see longevity in its in its holistic sense. Not just about being around for a long time, right? Uh, as I close, I want to remind us: the only consistency in the creation, as it relates to the human being, it is not. It's not places, right? Because there are places that we can't even find anymore, right? There are places that have, that have been wiped off the map. And Allah tells you, says, you know, you may see a trace of them. But the places as they exist they existed in the past, they are no longer there. It is not governments. Governments, they rise and they fall. Nations rise and fall. But what has been consistent, it is the people. And the people are the representations. They are the, the representation of, of, the, of the place. They are representations of the, the nations that rise. So that is the level that we work on. We work on the level of the people. We don't, we don't have to uh, be lost in the idea, the, the false idea of the permanence of any of the things that we see. But what is permanent, what has permanence, is going to be our intentions, our actions, 
right? Our collective, our individual actions and our collective actions. So if we are, if we are uh, properly understanding this, then we will work, we will work to make sure that our actions, our word, our collective work, that it outlives us. That it outlives us. So that begins with the connection, it begins with us understanding that there's no true, uh, there's no true life without us really understanding that our, our Al-Islam, that it obligates us to justice, it obligates us to community, it obligates us to all, all of these things. So may Allah, may Allah bless us to keep the best of intention. May Allah bless us to continue working, not just as, as individuals, but as communities. May Allah continue to uh, bless us to have eyes and ear, hearts that feel, and ears, uh, eyes that see, ears that hear, and hearts that feel. So I want to close by bringing our um, attention also to our ability to uh, extend our lives, our community life and influence that is also connected to how we spend the wealth that Allah has given us. And when I say the wealth, I don't mean just our material material resources, but I mean our social, our social capital, our intellectual capital, right? How we use these things and how we how we uh, employ these things towards satisfying their responsibility of the people. Allah tells us in the Quran, says that for us not to be spendthrifts, right? Means don't be a miser, don't be a stingy person, right? Spend in the way of Allah. It says, but also don't spend to the point where you become yourself become destitute, right? When you become a destitute person, we must understand the, the context in which we find ourselves today. It is a context of capital, right? It's very difficult to be a capitalist without any capital, right? <laughs> now, we don't want to be exploitative capitalists, right? We want to have good business relationship with people, right? We want to support those who, who go about business in a proper way, and we want to have our own mark on, and, uh, and entry and foray into business, right? These are things that we want as well. So we're not, we're not anti-capital, but we are anti-exploitation, right? But understanding the capital that we have, identifying that, not just our mature resources, but understanding how we use our social capital at this particular point in time is important. It's important. But again, Allah tells you, it says, don't spend to the point where you wind up yourself destitute. So there's a fine line to be walked. And I'm and I, I am purposely, I am purposely not giving specificity because I'm not here to tell anybody um, what to think, but do what you will with the concept. So we have our individual, our individual capital, we have community social capital, right? We have community social capital. And if we look at the problems that we are facing today, there is, there is a way, there's an avenue, there's opportunity for us to spin in a way that allows us to continue to stand for justice, right? Allows us to, to really embody the role of uh, Khalifa, of taking on responsibility for not just our individual life, but our community life as well. But don't do it in a way that causes you to become destitute. I'm, I'm sure I probably won't have a conversation for, to elucidate this outside afterwards. But if you can follow the logic of that, of where we find ourselves right now, right? Uh, as, a, as a masjid, we are a 501c, 501c3 organization, right? Which means that we don't, we don't take political stances on things. But we are talking logic that has political application. So as, uh, as our beloved uh, leader, man, Rafi uh, Muhammad, who tell us, says, follow the matter through to his logical conclusion. Right? And any good teacher would tell you that. Find the logic. So we are in a uh, in a space 
where we have the opportunity to be to be useful, not just to ourselves, but to but to but to the world, right? But to to, to the entire world. Uh, and it's important that we 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 accept that we take that on, and not be not be seduced or confused or thrown off by the by the allure of power, by the allure of of, third, of, of uh, authority, right? We did a little something. And now we feel like, you know, we can stick our chest out and, you know, we ain't got to worry about nobody else. No. This is successive, successive authority that we have. So that is the mission. We are working to establish successive authority. Um, I said when I was uh, first um, ratified as the man here, I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to go out as a, you know, like as, as a, you know, as an oldie. <laughs> and I get older every day. <laughs> you know, come do the love, right? We want longevity, but we also want those who are ready, who are coming up, to to to, to pass it off to, so we can continue to be of, of use and to support them. Right? That is the beauty of, of this connectivity. That's the beauty of when we have the proper understanding of the community. So we pray that Allah continues to bless us. We pray that Allah continues to guide us. We pray that Allah forgive us for any of our missteps. We pray Allah judge us for the best of our intentions, best of our, of our actions. We pray that Allah forgive all those who seek repentance. We pray that Allah continues to be with us in our moments of difficulty, our moments of the trial and tribulation. We pray that Allah continues to guide us on this path that he has dictated for us without a smile. And we pray that Allah continues uh, to guide us and make us closer to this beautiful book of Quran. We pray Allah raises us up on the day of judgment with the assurance of his reward. And protects us from the punishment of the fire. Amen. Amen.